Vaughn. Today we are covering chapter four. Okay. And this. Categorical variables, we could summarize them with how do you, how can, what's one way to summarize the categorical variables? Do you guys remember? Numbers? Okay. I was looking for something a little more specific. Um, chart. Okay, what kind of chart or bar table? Chart. <coughs> okay, a bar chart is one way, or, or pie chart, that's fine. Uh, if we want to use a table, do you remember, do you remember what it was called? Stack. It's uh, a frequency table, a frequency table, okay? So this is an aside, okay? So this is not part of that, okay? So this is just an aside. So for a categorical variable, we have a frequency table. If we're looking at one variable, and then if we have two variables, what do we use? A two-way table, okay? So frequency table for looking at one categorical variable, and if we're looking at two categorical variables, we create a two-way table. Do you guys remember what a two-way table looks like? Yeah, we had we had rows and we had columns for two variables, and it might show um, men and women, and maybe maybe their uh, yeah hair color or their political preference or whatever. And we could we could explore relationships between two categorical variables using a two-way table. Today we're going to look at relationships between to numeric variables, okay? So maybe um, take, a, take a moment here, and don't shout out any ideas or answers, but why don't you see if you can think of two numeric variables that might have a relationship, okay? So think, see if you can think of two numeric variables that might have a relationship. If you think of a pair of variables, go ahead and write it down on your paper. Two numeric variables so bold, uh, you know, you can raise your hand and I'll call on you and you can tell me what you think is a pair of variables that might have a relationship and, uh, and I'll, I'll try to tell you if that, that would work or that would not work in our example. So, uh, do we have any volunteers for two numeric, okay, so, so two. Uh, weight and height? Height and weight. That's an excellent example of two, vari two numeric variables, height. are two numeric variables that uh, I would say definitely have a relationship, okay? Are there other pairs of numeric variables that might be related? Yes? In your amount of gas you will get, so like in relation to how many miles you drive. Okay, so the amount of gas consumed to the distance driven. Okay, great. Okay, so quantity of gas consumed. Driven. Okay, excellent. 
two numeric variables that are related. Yes. Uh, how many miles do you run and how, many, how much calories do you burn? Okay, so distance ran and calories burned. Great. that might be related. Okay, well, th well, this is great. This is a great start, okay? And, uh, and so all of these, as we see, these are between two numeric variables, okay? So a common mistake I see people make is that they try to use a categorical variable um, and a numeric variable or something. This, the stuff we're talking about today only works for two numeric variables. And so let's let's look at height and weight. All right? If we looked at people as a whole, what kind of relationship would you say exists between height and weight if you just wanted to summarize the world? Yeah. The taller you are, the more you weigh, the smaller you are, the shorter you are, the less you are. Yeah, so in general, we can say something like taller people in general weigh more than shorter people in general, okay? Of course, everybody is different and there will be exceptions. We're going to have short people who weigh a lot, tall people who weigh little, and, uh, and everyone in between. But in general, we can say tall people weigh more than short people, okay? thing going on with quantity of gas consumed and the distance driven. In general, if you consume more gas, you've probably driven a further distance. Okay? If you've consumed less gas, you probably didn't travel as far. All right? So, again, okay, in general, okay, more gas consumed. Good thing I teach statistics and not English grammar or usage. Although I would say my grammar and usage is probably better than most, but that one I'm a little tripped up. Okay, and distance ran and calories burned also. In general, the farther or further you run, the more calories you burn. Okay? So all of these, all right? So these are all relationships between two numeric variables. And when we explore numeric variables, okay, uh, relationships between numeric variables, there's several things we want to talk about, okay? And, uh, and today's chapter, chapter four, is all about exploring these relationships between two numeric variables, okay? And, uh, and a lot of this we have some intuition about, but we're going to take a look at it from a statistics perspective and make it more interesting, I guess, or, or kill the joy out of life. Okay, so when describing So actually, whenever you describe a relationship, there's always things you want to know, okay? And 
So if you describe a relationship between two people, um, you know, there's things you want to know. You want to know how long have they been together, you know, what, is it a good, really healthy relationship, or is it, you know, unhealthy, or I don't know. There's, there's things that you can talk about when it, you're talking about um, two people. Uh, same, same idea when we're talking about two numeric variables. Um, there's, a, there's a few things you definitely want to know, okay? One is the form of the relationship, okay? Another is the direction. And last, we want to know the strength, okay? And then, um, generally, also anything unusual. Unusual. But that's, this, is, this is implied only, you bring up the unusual thing only if there is something unusual. Um, if we're describing a numeric set of data or numeric distribution, do you guys remember what the things you might want to mention? Describing a numeric set of data. Or what, are the, what are the things you've learned how to describe? The center. The center is one. Shape. shape. The shape is another. Uh, and the spread. Okay. Center, shape, and spread. <laughs> Great. Okay. And then if there's anything unusual, that's good to mention that also. But center, shape, and spread, if you're describing a, a numeric uh, set of data. And now when we're talking about relationships between numeric variables, we want to talk about form, direction, and strength. Okay. So when it comes to form, we're going to either see linear relationships or nonlinear relationships. So I think distance ran and calories burned would be a great example to see maybe a, a linear relationship. Does anyone know how many calories you burn when you run? Because I have no idea. If you ran a mile, how many calories did you burn? No idea, right? And how fast? Like 20, maybe? Yeah, not a lot. You burn more yeah, than you walk. You burn more than you walk. <coughs> All right, let's say we don't know. <laughs> All right, and we are going to go and. Um, All right, well, everybody's different, right? If I run a mile, I'm going to burn so many calories. If somebody else runs a mile, she or he's going to burn a different amount of calories. Okay, so let's say, and then, you know, how do you even measure how many calories you burned, right? It's like, uh, it's all just a guessing game, right? You go on that treadmill and then you're running and it says this is how many calories you burn. It has no idea, right? It's not like... <laughs> Nobody knows, right? The only way you can get a true measure is if you had some... Yeah, it's it's all a guessing game. So don't don't trust those treadmills or exercise bikes. They're just making things up, okay? They, you might be able to power a generator and they can say this is how much electricity generated, which might be related to how many calories you burn, but nobody knows, right? Okay, so let's say um, if somebody burns, you know, somebody might run one mile and they burn, who knows, uh, 150 calories, okay? All right, somebody else might run a mile and they maybe burn a little bit more. Someone else burn, runs a mile and they might burn less, okay? Who knows, I'm just making up numbers. Please don't hold to this, I okay? wish you burned that much. Huh? I wish you, you, don't, you don't burn this many? Mm. Not even close. Not huh? one mile, no. One mile, it takes yeah. you like uh, yeah. eight minutes to run. You can't burn uh, how many calories? Not that 40, much. 40, 50? Yeah, okay. sort of. Like all right, all right, all right. So my fitness experts over here are disagreeing. 
Okay, whatever. Okay. This is <laughs> fantasy land where the calories burn very quickly. All right. Okay, so if somebody runs, burns this many calories in one mile, how many calories do we expect to burn after two miles? Double. Maybe about double, right? So who knows? If this is whatever, I'm going to just put dots up here, okay? And, uh, and after three miles, we expect these people to burn more. Okay, it doesn't matter. And uh, and after four miles, we expect even more calories to burn. I feel like I burn a lot of calories just standing up here and talking to you. I'm always wiped out afterwards, right? Okay. I want to eat and drink a milkshake after. All right, okay, so anyway, this, we would call this a linear relationship because we can kind of run a straight line through all of these dots where we see, you know, the, the farther you run, the more calories you burn, and it seems to increase in a steady, very uh, linear fashion, a straight line, okay? So linear means straight line relationship. Okay. On the other hand, we have nonlinear relationships. Okay. interest works? Yes, no, some of you? All right, well basically, whether you are earning interest by having money put away in a bank or a CD or some other savings thing or a 401k or whatever, or if, uh, if you owe a company money, like their credit card or you owe a bank money, and you've got interest, if you just let it sit there, the amount that you owe or the amount that you have is gonna grow, okay? And they say it grows in an exponential rate, okay? And so, that, so it, it's still, the longer it sits there, the more money it grows, okay? So, um, so that's true, but the way it grows is not a straight line, but it grows like this, okay? So this is not a linear relationship, okay? So this is like, after um, one year of savings, you're like, man, I didn't earn anything. But then after two years, three years, you know, 10 years, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the amount that you've earned grows and grows and grows and it grows even more and more and more, okay? So the dots go like this. And this would be, uh, this, is, this is called ex an exponential relationship. And that's a nonlinear relationship, okay? Or it's kind of like, um, just imagine some, uh, if you have a, a safe haven, okay? Let's say you own a ranch and you love rabbits, okay? And so maybe you get a pair of rabbits and they have some children, okay? And then those children have children and those children have children, right? Pretty soon, after a few years, your whole place is overrun by rabbits. And why? Because the growth grows exponentially. Because it's not just the original parents that keep having children, it, but the children and the children's children and the grandchildren. And rabbits, they, um, they're not monogamous like, um, well, like penguins, right? I was going to say humans, but uh, that's who qualifies anymore. Okay. Uh, like humans once were, and 
Well, actually, in the beginning, probably. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it grows exponentially. Okay, because because uh, they keep having um, more and more kids and things like that. So that's a nonlinear relationship. Okay, we got other relationships that that go like this. All right. So anything that's not a straight line, we say nonlinear. Okay. So in our class, we're only going to learn about linear relationships. If you take more statistics, let's say you love this chapter, and you're like, I love statistics, and I loved it, especially what we did in chapter four. You can take an entire course that explores nonlinear and all sorts of other stuff, and uh, and it's very exciting. But um, but only if you love this chapter. So um, something tells me that not everybody would love this chapter. But yes, penguins. Well, actually, penguins are only monogamous for one season. Um, I believe uh, doves are monogamous their entire lives. Swans. And swans, yeah. And then they do that thing when they bow their heads together and it forms a heart, right? <laughs> Put that on a card. Make your significant other feel happy. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's the form of the relationship, okay? The other thing is we've got the direction and the strength, all right? So, so far, all uh, the, the pairs of numeric variables that we looked at, these all have positive direction, okay? So the direction, there's positive and there's negative, okay? Positive and uh, a negative, but I'm gonna I'll describe positive first. So positive means that as one variable increases, we expect the other variable to increase as well. Okay. So If one variable decreases, we expect the other variable to decrease, right? So, same thing. So basically, the two variables, they increase or they decrease together, in general, in general, okay? So they increase, the two variables move together, in, in general, okay? So, that's why we said overall, in general, taller people weigh more. Okay, so as height increases, we expect weight to increase, okay? Um, shorter people weigh less, as height goes down, we expect the weight to go down, okay? Same thing with distance traveled and calories burned or things like that. A negative relationship is just the opposite. Okay, as one variable increases, Decreases, we expect the other to increase. Okay. So that's a, a negative relationship. Something like 
this. As one variable increases, so, so to increase in the horizontal, this would be, we would call this the x variable. And the vertical is the y variable. So a positive relationship means generally large values of x correspond to large values of y. Okay, so that's another way of describing positive relationship. On the other hand, we have a negative relationship. values of x correspond to small values of y. Okay, so let's uh, take a moment and, uh, and don't shout anything out. But see if you can think of a pair of numeric variables that would have a negative relationship. Okay, so see if you can think of two numeric variables that might have a negative relationship. We saw several positive. Let's see if you can think of two numeric variables with a negative relationship. So we'll just give everybody a, a moment to think. Okay, so really. Uh, I want you guys to think rather than just sit there and stare off hoping somebody else will answer the question for you. <laughs> you've driven and the amount of gas you have in your tank left. Okay, so that's a that's just a flip of kind of what we said earlier, but it works very well in terms of a negative relationship. So distance travel and gasoline remaining. Okay. <coughs> of numeric variables that, yes? Okay. Uh, so the money borrowed versus the money owed? Is that what you're saying? Okay. I, I feel like that's, I feel like we're looking at the same variable twice. 
or maybe I'm maybe I'm understanding it not the way you you're imagining it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. So the amount borrowed and the amount owed with a particular interest rate and a particular amount of time, because if, or if we're adding like three, another dimension of how, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, let, let, let's try something else here, yes. Maybe like the older you get, the less you sleep in general, like a baby has a low Oh, okay, age, okay, yeah, yeah, like yeah. all right. Years. So your age and, uh, and, um, and the, and the amount of sleep you get at night, okay? That, that's true, okay. Especially among children, right? And then, well, and then somehow, like, when you're, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, okay, okay. So, so age and sleep required. All right, that's that's good. Um, let's see how we're doing that. Okay, I'll just throw one up there. How about um, outside temperature? And uh, sweaters sold, and uh, maybe uh, the number of sweaters sold. So, if it's really hot outside, we don't expect people to sell a lot of sweaters. If it's really cold outside, we expect them to sell more sweaters. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I would say these. These have negative relationships where if one variable is large, we expect the other variable to be low. Okay, and this also uh, it works both ways, right? So if we if somebody says, "Oh, I sold a bunch of sweaters," it was probably a cold day, okay? Okay, or it's probably a, you know colder month like November or February or something like that. Whereas someone said, "Well," We don't really sell too many sweaters these days. Maybe that's in June or July. All right, so that is the direction. So we've talked about the form and the direction. And the last thing is the strength of our relationship. Strength tells us uh, there's a few ways we could describe strength. Okay, one is how well of a prediction can we make? Um, so I'll say if we know the value of one variable. well can we predict the value of the other variable? Okay, so that's one way to think of strength. So in a strong relationship, you can make very good predictions. In a weak relationship, your predictions are going to be bad, okay? So strong, good predictions, and weak, that means uh, not as good predictions. I don't want to say bad, because bad means
Okay, so um, what would be a good example? Okay, so maybe uh, So this is a very simple, silly example, but what if we looked at the height of someone, height in inches, and we looked at height in centimeters? Okay, so we just looked at someone, we said, how tall are you in inches, how tall are you in centimeters? Well, we would have a positive relationship, okay? And do we have a strong or weak relationship there? Strong. Strong. Strong, okay? How how well can we predict the other variable if we know the value of one? Exactly. Very well. Exactly, right? In fact, we can predict the other answer exactly because we just say take your height in inches and we multiply it by 2.2, right? And so in that case, our dots are lined up exactly along this line, okay? So this is actually, uh, our predictions would be exact so uh, we actually have a perfectly strong relationship. silly example because we would never really uh, do something like that. It's, it's completely redundant to do that. So we might have other relationships that are um, that would be strong, but maybe not not so perfect. Okay. Um, maybe we can measure um, the length of your foot, and uh, and we can look at the shoe size you wear. Okay. And, and some people, because they have different, people have slightly different ten, uh, preferences to how tight or how loose their shoe ought to be. People with the same, if we looked at the length of foot, might wear slightly different shoe sizes, okay? So we will see um, a tiny bit of scattering, but not a lot, okay? So if we looked at, um, We looked at shoe size, uh, length of foot, foot length, maybe in uh, in centimeters, and we looked at shoe size, whether that's uh, American or British or UK, uh, British or uh, European shoe size, whatever it might be, we might we're, we're probably going to see a very uh, very strong relationship, but maybe not. A perfect relationship. Okay, so this would be very strong. Right. Okay. Um, maybe. Uh, we can have another relationship, but it might be weak, okay? So maybe we look at someone's foot length, how long their foot is, foot length in centimeters, and, uh, and we look at uh, the weight of the person, okay? Uh, or maybe not weight. Uh, man, we'll do. We'll go with height. Okay, with height. All right. In general, in general, people with larger feet tend to be taller than people with smaller feet. Okay. 
But we all know someone who's shorter than you that has bigger feet and someone who's taller than you with smaller feet and things like that. So this is not as good of a, this is not as strong of a relationship, but in general, you would still have um, a positive relationship, okay? So here we have a lot more scatter. still might be linear, okay? But if you ask, you know, how well can you predict the other variable if you know one variable, the answer is not that well, okay? So over here, if you knew someone's foot, uh, foot length, you could predict their shoe size very, very well, okay? You might be off because they might prefer tighter shoes or, or looser shoes. Over here, if you know their foot size, you might be able to predict whether they are taller than average or shorter than average, but beyond that, your predictions aren't going to be very great. Okay? And then lastly, there might be no relationship between two numeric variables. So we can look at foot length and, uh, and what might have no relationship. Um, Hair color. Our uh, hair color is categorical, oh, that's true. so we can't uh, we can't do this. Uh, but maybe uh, IQ score, okay? IQ score. So so here we will have um, people with high IQs with little feet, people with high IQs with big feet, people with low IQs with little feet, people with low IQs with big feet, and everyone in between, okay? Average IQ people with big feet and small feet and average feet size, okay? So we probably see no relationship. because if we say correlation, we're assuming we're talking about the correlation coefficient. Okay. Coefficient just is a fancy word for saying a number. Okay. It's like the correlation number. But we like to say coefficient. It makes us feel fancy. Okay, and... Uh, and the symbol that we use for this is R. What is the symbol for me? X bar. X bar, okay. What's the symbol for standard deviation? S. S, okay, good. Symbol for correlation is R, okay. There is a formula to calculate correlation. However, it's very tedious, okay. 
It's not incredibly hard, but it's very tedious. And, you know, I, the standard deviation is about as tedious as I want to get anyway, okay? Uh, the way to calculate correlation is even worse. So for that, we're just going to leave it to computers, and we're going to say, computer, calculate the correlation for me. They're very good at it. And, uh, and we're just going to um, either the correlation R will be given to you in a problem or, um, or something like that, OK? So there is a formula, but we won't bother learning how to calculate correlation by hand. Okay, so we won't learn how to calculate R by hand. Okay, uh, we will ask a computer. So even if you don't have to calculate it by hand, you do have to know what it means, okay? So this is very important. R can be any value between 0 and 1 inclusive. And I hope this notation is okay. Meaning, I'm sorry, R can be any value between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. My apologies. R can be anything between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Inclusive means including one and including negative one, okay? So, um, inclusive, yeah, that means it can be any value between negative one and one, and it could also be negative one or one, okay? Inclusive. Okay, if R is positive, then the direction is what? Positive, okay? The direction of the relationship is positive, okay? R, R describes a relationship, remember that? Direction of relationship. And if R is negative, then the direction of the relationship is negative. Good. All right. So far, so good? If r is far from 0, so what does it mean to be far from 0? So that means r is close to 1, or it's close to negative 1. So you might have 0.99, or 95, or 0.9, even, okay? Or r is negative 0.9, or negative 0.95, okay? So if r is far from 0, then the relationship is strong. And if r is close to 0, And the relationship is weak. And everything in between, okay? So R close to zero, that's usually R is between negative 0.2 and positive 0.2. R far from zero is R is like 0.9 and up or negative 0.9 and lower, okay? And then everything in between, it's kind of a judgment call, and it depends on the uh, situation that you're in, okay? If you're dealing with predictable situations, like you're dealing with machines and robots, you're expecting to see R's that are very close to 1, like 0 0.98, 0 0.99, okay? And maybe seeing an R of 0 0.9 in your situation, if you're dealing with robots, would indicate that the robot is encountering a serious problem. Okay? However, if you're, however, if you're dealing with people, 
um, you might be excited to see an R that's 0.65, okay? Because for people, an R of 0.65 means, wow, there's actually a trend happening because it's much more difficult to detect trends in large groups of people. People are much less predictable than robots. All right, let's, um, let's take a short break. We'll come back in about 10 minutes uh, to finish the rest of the chapter.